Recovering from knee surgery is highly variable. It was going to take forever to get better if I was ever going to get better. There's got to be something out there besides a CPM machine, which and clearly isn't helping get me. Active and aggressive with this thing, or I was going to. Need you know, I'm a guy that's not addition. looking to relieve the pain. I'm a guy that's looking to get back in the game. That downtime was not what I wanted. We've spent the last seven years perfecting the recovery system that takes variability out of knee rehab so you can quickly get back to your life. Welcome to The Bee's Knees, a podcast full of articles, interviews, clinical studies, and advice about knee surgery, physical therapy, and life after knee surgery. Hi, this is PJ Ewing, host of The Bee's Knees podcast, as well as a knee recovery coach at X10. I'm going to go through a series of podcasts over the next few weeks that explore the major obstacles to a successful recovery. Um, I'm going to start with deep vein thrombosis, but I'm going to go through infection, lack of extension in your bend, lack of flexion. Um, we're going to talk about strengthening, uh, a few important topics really related to recovery for, from surgery, particularly total knee replacement. Uh, so in this case, we're going to talk about the DVT, deep vein thrombosis. And uh, let's start with the definition. This DVT uh, thing occurs when a blood clot forms in one of the deep veins of the body. This can happen if a vein becomes damaged or if the blood flow within a vein slows down or stops. While there are a number of risk factors for developing a DVT, two of the most common are experiencing an injury to your lower body or having a surgery that involves your hips or legs, obviously the knee right, right there in the middle of the leg. Um, it is a concern for those who undergo a total knee replacement surgery. So I want to implore upon everybody to take this pretty seriously. Um, it has very serious consequences if you do develop a clot. Um, if it breaks free, it may travel through the bloodstream and block blood flow to the lungs. Now this is kind of rare, but this, this complication, uh, but it's labeled a uh, pulmonary embolism. And if it does happen, it can be fatal. A clot can also land in the heart, <clears throat> and that causes a heart attack or stroke. Not so good either. Even if a blood clot does not break free, it may cause permanent damage to the valves in the vein. This damage can lead to long-term problems in the leg, such as pain, swelling, and leg sores. In many cases, a DVT occurs without noticeable symptoms. So that means it's a little bit tricky, difficult to detect. For this reason, doctors focus on preventing the development of these DVTs using different types of therapies depending on a patient's needs. Your doctor will take steps to prevent DVT if you have a major fracture or have, are having lower extremity surgery. So this would include our total knee replacement. Um, if you check the show notes in this podcast, you'll see some terrific graphs um, on the landing page. So I would take a good look at those. There are some great illustrations of what happens when there's a blockage or when there's um, a breakage and you can see a clot breaking free. Okay, so let's talk about some symptoms to watch for. Now, only about half the people who get DVTs have the symptoms. So if you're feeling any signs of the following, um, you know, you really want to get in front of your surgeon or your primary care physician as soon as possible. Uh, if you feel, here are the symptoms. Uh, they are pain or tenderness in your leg, swelling or warmth in your leg, red or discolored skin, veins that stick out, shortness of breath, coughing up blood, that's obviously a, a big one, sudden chest pain, and painful breathing. I'll also suggest that you visit the web page because there's a great video by these very uh, entertaining and very knowledgeable physical therapists, Bob Shrupp and Brad Hainick. They're great. They have a whole series of videos on the internet. And in this case, they go through a full uh, visual depiction of how to determine if you have a DVT using a thing called the Homans test. It's really great, and I think you should uh, take a look at that video or just look up the Homans test for blood clots on YouTube, H-O-M-A-N apostrophe S. Uh, it's really worth a look. Okay, specific to total knee replacement. You want to look for or sense or determine if you've got a sharp 
pain at the back of your surgical calf. So if you're feeling a sharp pain you know, on the operative leg in the back of the calf, that's a, a, a sign, a bad sign. Um, if you've had total knee replacement, the surgical leg will be in pain, of course, right? I mean, it's going to hurt. But pain is a normal thing. Uh, it's the way the body is sort of telling, it's the body's way of telling you uh, that it's been through trauma. However, if it feels sharp and concentrated in the back of your calf, this is a sign that something may be wrong. If it feels like it's shooting or spiking, really important concepts, shooting or spiking through the back of your leg, this is beyond what we would call normal pain. If you're experiencing sharp pain through your calf on your surgical side, then you want to reach out to your surgeon. As I mentioned, this is the beginning of a series of short blogs about different conditions that are threats to total knee replacement. We'll have more for you very soon, so you know, hopefully you have subscribed to the podcast and you'll get these automatically updated when they are published. If you do have a surgery coming up, listen to this all about the X10 knee recovery system. So what is this X10? The concept of X10 started with the idea that we could solve the single biggest problem in knee surgery recovery. That problem is variability. Too many people have disappointing recoveries that could have been avoided. There are too many varied approaches to recovery, many that unnecessarily push patients into pain. The design of the X10 knee machine started with the physiology of the human body and then added biofeedback mechanisms to feel the body's movement and make adjustments based upon that information. The other big idea was to put the control of the recovery process into the hands of the patient. No longer does your recovery depend on others. Rather, you are in control of the pace and quality of your recovery, all without the pain usually associated with knee surgery recovery. The result of years of research and development is a small in-home device that you use for a few weeks before and after surgery that minimizes recovery times and rehab complications. You get the results that you want in your home within weeks of your surgery with the help of your own in-person and remote recovery team. There is some insurance coverage available, but most patients lease the X10 machine for about three weeks. To learn more, call us at 855-910-5633 or visit x10therapy.com. If you're interested in becoming a guest on the Bees Knees podcast or have comments or suggestions, please do not hesitate to email the Bees Knees podcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. To learn more, visit x10therapy.com, 1-855-910-5633. Just a reminder, it's a huge help if you subscribe to, rate, and review our podcast. It helps people find us. X10, back to full strength.